Hey folks, Dave the Not So Evil Evil Viking 13 here. And one of the most frequent questions that I get on my Fallout videos is what is your mod list? And so, now that I've kind of locked down the mods that I use for my settlement crafting, I think it's time to put together a little video that I'm going to call the list of must have settlement crafting mods. As I make this video, this is for the PC version of Fallout 4 and most of these mods are installed with the Nexus Mod Manager, but you might see some of these on consoles in the future, so keep an eye out for news on console modding for sure. Before I dive into the list of the mods that I do use, let me answer a couple of questions about the mods that I don't use, just briefly because I also get these all the time, and I want you guys to think this over before you use these mods as well. I don't use any mods that edit the base cells of the settlements that I'm working on. So no mods that let you uh, remove static houses and objects that are part of the cell or the, uh, the map itself. And the reason for this is I want my save games to be compatible for the future. As Bethesda releases patches for the game, they might change things in those cells. And if you've changed those things as well, well things could go wrong. Now, I know some people are using them successfully. These mods let you remove tons of objects from the settlements, but personally, I'm gonna play it safe and just avoid them for now. Additionally, I'm not using any mods that change the radius of the settlement crafting areas, kind of for the same reason. I just don't wanna mess with those base cell settings in the game, at least until official mod tools are out. These mods in particular, I have heard of people having issues with, so think twice before you use them. Okay guys, now on to the good stuff. When it comes to decorating your settlements, if you have tried to place props like weapons, and maybe uh, cartons of cigars and bottles and cups around your settlement, you might know that the physics frequently freak out. To fix this, the go-to mod is going to be OC Decorator. This mod is another one that's just absolutely huge in scope and very, very polished. This mod lets you place any prop in the game that you have in the inventory of yourself or your settlements as a locked down prop in your settlement. Essentially, all those Nuka-Cola bottles that you were trying to place by hand, just use OC Decorator and place them locked down onto a counter or a table or wherever you want and they're going to stay there. Dog meat and your bumbling settlers won't knock them over. Now, I already mentioned scope and that's because OC Decorator lets you place an insane amount of objects from the game. I would say pretty close to all of the relevant objects that you might want to place. And now it even has a dispenser object where you can put customized loot into it and it spits out a static, locked down version of that piece of loot for you to use to decorate. It's some incredible modding work by McFace, and if you're going to go absolutely nuts like I do, detailing your settlements, save yourself the frustration and get OC Decorator. If you're going to use a number of the mods in this list, or any large number of mods that edit the settlement window, you might already know that it gets very, very crowded and very disorganized very quickly. There's a lot of scrolling left and right. To help with this, Modder Stuck has created a framework called Settlement Keywords. Settlement Keywords is a framework that lets other mods use custom categories in the settlement window to help keep things organized. This is something that's going to be very useful going forward as more and more of these mods come out and it's one of the first mods that you're going to want to grab, like I said, if you're going to use a lot of these mods that I'm listing here in this video. From there, when it comes to unlocking your settlements, you're going to want to have a mod that lets you get rid of the settlement memory limit. The mod that I use for this is called Settlements Expanded by Bluesyn, and it's essentially a list of console commands in a bat file that is placed in your Fallout directory, and then you can go to your settlement that you want to unlock, and it runs the bat file and runs all of those console commands for you to get rid of that memory limit as you're building your settlements. And that's a must have right out the gate pretty much. So now that you have your categories organized and your settlements are unlocked, it's time to look at some mods to add some new custom objects to build. 
The game itself comes with a very limited selection. So what we're going to do first is we're going to add the extremely popular Homemaker mod, and that is by Novo Kuru. This is a incredible mod for adding more options for your settlements. You get over a thousand new objects, and they're all carefully organized and carefully updated for compatibility with settlement crafting. Just the overall polish and scope of this mod is just really, really impressive. Homemaker is a must-have for anyone who wants to make more detailed and more immersive settlements in Fallout 4. Besides just adding new modules and houses that you can build, like you can place the Covenant houses and the amphitheaters and the vault catwalks and just tons of objects from the game, but it also adds a ridiculous amount of decorations that you can add and clutter and trees and rocks. Homemaker alone comes very close to turning the Fallout 4 settlement crafting system into a Fallout 4 level design system. Like I said, its scope and quality is impressive. Check it out for sure, right at the top of the list. Next up, we have the Snap and Build mods from AD3D0. This is a set of mods that add a ton of things for you to build in your settlements based off of modular units of buildings that you see around the Commonwealth in-game. What this means is it adds snap together vault tech style capsule modules, industrial modules, as well as additional things as you go down his mod list like immersive modular doorways, metal windows, and metal and wooden rooftops, as well as wooden walls that actually have windows. You guys realize that the default settlements actually have no windowed walls whatsoever? Snap and Build fixes this, and is also, in my opinion, a must-have for your settlements. Do be aware, though, that there's probably a reason that Bethesda did not actually add in windows to the walls that are in the game, and that is that they are a bit of a performance hit. If you build a massive windowed structure with a lot of transparent glass, expect a pretty noticeable frame rate drop. But hey, that's your option if you want to do it, that's what mods are for. Additionally, if you're going to go down and pick up a lot of AD3D0's snap and build mods, make sure that you also pick up the settlement keywords compatibility patch for snap and build to make sure that all of these new wall units are added into the categories where they belong. Speaking of expanding your options, let's just run down this massive list of mods from DD Productions 83. He has made a crazy amount of mods that adds to your settlement building. These mods are a bit more specific, and so you might not want all of these, but let me just show you the ones that I'm using. First up, Stackable Concrete Foundations. This gives you a few more options for your concrete blocks for the base of your foundations and makes them stack together and snap together vertically. Very useful. Then we have craftable tall walls and spacers. Sometimes to fill a weird shaped house, you need a wall that's a bit taller and that fills the gap. No pun intended, I guess. <laughs> it also comes with some very useful spacers for filling in spaces between floors if you've accidentally used a short wall, and these spacers do snap. Actually, I found that these spacers are a great filler object just for a number of areas, not just in between floors. It's just kind of a um, couple of 2x4s put together basically, and it's just very useful for filling in some gaps. I also use his mod for solar panels and for fusion reactors. Now, I have disabled the fusion reactor part of it because I think that uh, Homemaker adds plenty of reactor options, but I do really like using his solar panels. That feels like a very appropriate power source for after the apocalypse. Next up, one of the first mods that I used from DD Productions 83, Craftable Ramps and Rails. Now, I'm pretty sure that the AI can't use these, but it is really, really helpful to use these ramps to make maybe staircases that aren't totally vertical and to uh, just fill out some of those deck spaces so that it's not all just stairs and flat spaces. Use them sparingly, maybe, just in case the AI gets stuck on them, but 
the ramps are part of my build list. If you guys have seen any of my Fallout crafting videos, you know that immersion and realism is a big part of what I do. So DD Productions Pillars and Stuffs mod is a huge part of my builds because whenever I have an overhang that looks kind of fake, I add some support pillars and some braces to it and that really helps with that realistic look. I'm also using his craftable glass stuffs. This is maybe a bit of a stretch for immersion, but I mean there's so much glass around here, eventually someone's going to figure out how to put it to good use. And for a nicer settlement, maybe a hotel, like the Croup Manor hotel that I made, glass could possibly make a lot of sense. In the end, how you use it is up to you, but I would recommend his glass mods as well. He also has some lore friendly elevators and animated bridges. These aren't useful for every settlement necessarily, but if you can think of a spot that might need a nice retractable drawbridge, or maybe a very tall settlement that could use a nice realistic looking elevator, well check out his elevators and bridges mods. Now as you guys know, sometimes you'll have a settlement that needs a lot of water, but has no actual body of water in it. This is where DD Productions craftable gigantic water wells come in. Instead of the eyesore of a thousand small water pumps, why not just build one gigantic powered well to provide water for your settlement? I like this one a lot. Along with his craftable and stackable concrete foundations, I also use his one by one craftable foundation pieces. This gives you some concrete blocks that are a fourth of the size of the normal blocks and that makes them really useful for filling in gaps and weird shapes while still giving your buildings a nice foundation. And one of the final mods that I use from DD Productions is going to be craftable floor supports. This mod complements his other support mods which is craftable pillars and support braces and lets you actually add some nice large supports for your settlement's foundations. These particular floor supports are great for supporting overhangs in particular, and I use them a lot in my settlement builds. So guys, that's the core of my Fallout 4 settlement mods. That list, as it is right now, will get you a lot of the options that you see me using, but let's talk about some individual mods that do just help to flesh things out when I'm working on a settlement build. First up, I'm using Better Stores by Blazetta59. Better Stores adds over 20 flags, including some options for some textures that you can add to make your own custom flags right there in the mod. It also adds over 20 signs, a cash register, med kits, and a bunch of options for making some really nice looking stores. If you're tired of the shack looking stores in the base game, this is a great mod to help out with that. Along those same lines of thought of making some really nice and really detailed looking stores, you're going to want to check out Business Settlements 1.7 from Tamayo831. Now there might be some overlap between this mod and the previous Better Stores one, but as far as I can tell, there's no actual conflicts. Business settlements will give you a ton of fantastic small signs and posters as well as some very large signs to make some great looking stores and advertisements and just add some realistic store related and business related clutter for your settlements. I am also using from MM137 stackable brick walls and foundations. This mod adds seamless, craftable, snappable and stackable versions of the stone foundations which uses a vanilla brick wall texture and also adds some flat brick walls. Nice and simple and useful for giving yourself some more options for your foundations for your settlements. To help add some variety to the plant decorations in my settlements, I'm using Eli's craftable flower pots mod, Flower Power 1.2. This lets you craft a number of miscellaneous decorations, including some potted plants and flowers that fit right in in your Commonwealth settlements. If you'd like to add some nice displays of weapons to your settlements, 
I use from Secret Agent 99 the Functional Weapon Racks mod. This gives you weapon racks that you can place on any wall in your settlement and then put the appropriately sized weapons onto them and then you can actually see them displayed right there on the weapons rack. When it comes to wall decorations and overall signage, I'm using a couple of really great mods to add some more posters and some more wall decorations. First up, from Bland Sauce, OSHA unapproved safety signage. This gives you a lot of those, you know, use your head, use eye protection, caution, radiation, all those kind of signs that you see as you're out and about exploring the Commonwealth. It gives you those in your workshop. To go along with the safety posters, I'm also using the Vault poster mod from Siles. This lets you pick either brand new or worn and damaged vault posters, just like you saw in the other vaults in the game. And you can add those to your settlement now. A great mod to add some new paintings to your game that also fit the game is the Museum Paintings mod from Moralean. These paintings keep things lore friendly and fit right in with the rest. I did add a Fallout themed custom paintings mod, this one from Zerasita, and I do use it sparingly because I don't want to totally break down the lore and the immersion as I'm building my settlements, but hey, it kind of fits. I mean, people have seen the Capital Wasteland, people have probably heard of the Rangers and the NCR out west. This is just a very cool mod to add some Fallout themed paintings to your settlements. Okay guys, whew, I think that's about all the mods that I use to add things to the workshop. Let's talk about a couple of just improvement mods that I use for settlement crafting. First up, a texture replacement. You guys have asked about this one quite a bit. I'm using Shack Floors Redone 4K, but the dull 2K version of the texture. This retextures the super junky looking wooden shack floor textures and just makes them look a little bit more organized and a little bit nicer and it really works with the kind of settlements that I'm crafting. You do have a couple of options there on the page that you can pick from. Like I said, I'm using the 2K version and the kind of dull and slightly faded version of the wood so everything doesn't look like it just came out of the sawmill. It's worn, but just not totally destroyed and awful looking like the base game's wood textures. Keep in mind too, this will actually affect the textures of that type of wood and that type of shack foundation across the entire game. So I wouldn't go too crazy with making the wood look bright and brand new. I'm also using Snappable Junk Fences by Darth Wayne. That helps those gigantic junk fences actually snap together. And I am also using Improved Shack Bridges, also by Darth Wayne, that adds snap points to the wooden shack bridge units as well, makes them a bit easier to work with and a bit easier to organize as you're building your settlements. To help improve the overall looks of the lighting in my settlements, I'm using Brighter Settlement Lights by Elvani, as well as the Construction Light Configurator, also by Elvani. Brighter Settlement Lights is kind of self-explanatory, but the Construction Light Configurator lets you kind of tweak the settings of that neat looking construction light that you can build. You can make it brighter, more harsh, less harsh, make it have shadows, all kinds of stuff. It's got a useful installer once you decide to use it. And while we're on the subject of lights for your settlements, I'm also using Turret Spotlight with Shadows by Silent Spectre. This finally gives those defensive spotlights some nice reach, some nice brightness, and also gives them a bit of shadows. Of course, this extra brightness and shadows will affect your FPS just a bit, so use with caution, but I highly recommend it. It's well worth a performance hit. If you're like me and don't feel like wasting resources on repairing damaged settlements that you didn't even realize were under attack, check out the Better Warning for Settlements Being Attacked mod by Shake Ujin, I believe. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but I mean, the name is also pretty self-explanatory here. This will make it so that if you get a mission to go protect a settlement, it actually pops up with a box where you have to hit OK. 
to make sure you actually see it when it pops up. Let's talk just briefly about the NPCs, your settlers. If you're like me and you're creating some fantastically large and detailed and pretty advanced settlements, it might be getting kind of old to see all of your settlers looking dirty and disheveled and have crappy weapons and look like they just walked straight out of the wasteland. To help fix that, I am using the Better Settlers mod by Thom293. This is a really, really awesome mod that cleans up your settlers, also adds some diversity, and adds a lot of different options for them to spawn different gear in. You'll actually have settlers that might join your settlement that would have leather armor, or combat armor, or uh, different weapons, or stim packs. It's pretty balanced from what I've seen, and it is so awesome to actually see a wider variety of realistic looking settlers for your settlements that look like they're actually settling in and improving their lives. I highly recommend the Better Settlers mod. If you're tired of your ridiculously protected settlements never actually getting attacked, there is in fact a mod for you. And this is a mod that I'm going to be using for all of my future settlement tour videos when I test my defenses. This mod is called the Settlement Raiding Mod by the Faceless Wastelander. This is an amazing idea. This mod is essentially a collection of console commands that are placed into your Fallout directory. And when you want to simulate an attack on one of your settlements, you simply put in four characters matching the settlement that you want to be attacked, the type of attackers that you want, and the difficulty level that you want to have for that attack. It's got some very simple instructions right there on the mod page. For example, if I want Sanctuary Hill to be attacked, in my case, Fortress Sanctuary, I would type, after installing the mod, SH into the console, then a single character for the type of attackers that I want, let's do G for gunners, and then a difficulty level as the last character. So if I want hard, I would put H. So all I put into the console is bat, that B-A-T to run the bat file, bat, S-H, G-H. Hit enter, and then wait as the mod creates the scripts to begin the attack. This is a really simple way to spawn enemies and test your defenses, and it's going to save me so much annoyance with trying to spawn in enemies on my own. He's done all of the work for us, and if you guys are like me, you're going to spend a lot of time having your settlements just cut down waves of attackers. It's a crazy amount of fun. Check it out. Well guys, that finally covers all of the major and minor improvements to all the objects that I build for my settlements, as well as the mods that I use to enhance my settlements looks and functions. But now let's talk about two mods that I use to essentially save my sanity as I'm building my settlements. These mods are basically frameworks to help as you're constructing your settlements. First up, we have the Place Everywhere mod by The Lich. I would consider this an advanced mod because it is a bit more difficult to install. It requires Fallout 4 script extender to be installed and you have to launch the game through a special executable for the script extender to get it to work. But all of the instructions are on the mods page. If you want the ability to place any objects that you want, basically anywhere you want, through a wall and another object in any kind of red zones, this is the mod that can make that happen. In some cases, you have to place an object in the open area first, then pick it back up to move it to wherever you want it, but this mod has quickly become a lifesaver for me. It saves so much time, and also opens up a lot of really creative options, being able to actually clip things into each other. I highly recommend it, even with the more advanced installation instructions. But Let's say that you've placed your object and you want to just nudge it that tiniest bit of pixel amount, just one or two units over just to get it exactly where you want it. Well, you can do that with console commands, of course, with the mod POS, mod position command, but there's an auto hotkey script to help with that as well. 
This mod is called Precise Object Moving and Rotating by AD3D0 once again. Auto Hotkey is a program that basically hits keyboard commands for you. And this mod is a script basically just for Auto Hotkey. Launch the game, open up Auto Hotkey and load this script. And it turns your numeral pad into an adjustment pad for placing objects. All you have to do once the script is running in the background in Auto Hotkey, tab back into the game, place the object that you want to uh, more precisely rotate or place, then open up the console, use the mouse to click on the object that you want to adjust, and then just follow the instructions given in the mod. Use the numeral pad to adjust. For example, numerals 4 and 6, it moves the object by the x-axis, 8 and 2 moves it by the y-axis, and so on from there. It sounds complicated, but if you think about how your numeral pad is laid out, imagine it as a directional pad, and there you go. Now you can click on an object, and with this script mod, let it do all of the console command work for you, and very precisely place and move objects. Now guys, with all mods, things are constantly in flux. Patches come out, mods are updated, incompatibilities arise, things are going to change. But this list should be a great starting point for you to build your own list of must-have settlement crafting mods. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this look at what you can do once these mods unlock all these new possibilities. As always guys, the information and links in the description of this video will be the most up-to-date information available about these mods. Of course, I can't update this video once it's uploaded, but I can update the description. So look down there in the description for the latest information on the mods that I talked about today. I might also add a few of my extra mods that I'm also using to just improve other parts of the game down there at the bottom. If you found this video helpful, a like is always appreciated, as well as sharing it with a friend who might also find it helpful or interesting. And if you want to see more of my settlements in action, be sure to check out the other settlement tour videos that are up on my channel, and some of my live builds as well. As always guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.